KK Rex, and welcome back to another one of my videos. So I know I've been gone for a minute, but I actually have a video that was highly requested by you guys, and it's a tutorial on using the Akai MPK Mini. So I looked on YouTube for a little bit to see if there are any tutorials on there, and there are some, but they're not really in depth, and they're more on the software. So I'm actually gonna do one on the actual Mini itself, and hopefully you guys can learn something and enjoy it, and actually maybe get one for yourselves, because I actually highly recommend this pad. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and let's get into it. All right, guys, so when you get the Akai MPK Mini, um, it comes in this box, right? And there's like a user manual, there's the website to go to for the software, etc., etc. And then it comes with this cable. So this cable just has USB at the end. I'm plugging that into my MacBook Pro, which is a 15 inch 2015 MacBook Pro, and it's just open to GarageBand. So I could actually make a sound and you guys could hear it, right? So. All right guys, so I'm gonna start from the top left of the MIDI, and then we're gonna move right, and I'll show you everything that it does, et cetera, et cetera, and like, how you guys can use it, because this is a tutorial on how to use it, not just what it does. So, if we start in the top left, if you see this red little knob right there, right? Let's see, I'll just pick it up so you guys can see it closer. Just that, it's just, just a knob, right? It's a pitch bend, so for example, if I hold C, and I move it to the right, it'll go up, or vice versa. So that's all that does. All right, and when you look below the pitch bend, you'll see an arpeggiator on and off and a tap tempo. So the arpeggiator is really fun for me. I really like using it. Uh, let me focus, all right, cool. So for example, when I turn on the arpeggiator, I could just tap a tempo. You see it's blinking, that's the tempo it's set at. But for example, if I wanted to slow it down, I'll be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So now the light should be blinking on that ones and twos and threes. So now if I hold down, hold down a note, my bad, it should sound on that beat, so like this. All right guys, so this is something I haven't seen anybody talk about on YouTube yet. So on top of the keys for the arpeggiator, there's things like right there, as you guys can see, and it's one fourth and then one fourth T, which is a one fourth triplet, and then one eighth, one eighth triplet, one sixteen, same thing. And then up and down is like if you want it to go up the notes for your arpeggiator or down. So I'll show you how it works. So in order to set that in, right, let me focus. All right, in order for it to set it, you have to hold down the arpeggiator button, which is the top left button right here. You hold it down and say, I want it to be a one eighth triplet and I want it to go up. So now when I turn it on, and uh, let's say I want to play an F. You see, that's what it would do. Or for example, if I wanted to go a little bit faster and get a 116 triplet, I just go like that after I hold it down and it should be in, so. Yeah, you see? So, there, so the arpeggiator is actually kind of fun to use and if you use it right, you could actually make something really fire. Okay guys, so under the arpeggiator, you have the octaves and there are 10 octaves on this MIDI. So it's self, kind of self-explanatory, right? So obviously let's just use a C and you hit the octave up, it turns red. And then if you're gonna press it again, it's going to blink, which indicates that it's going up. So that's the blink, it's up one more time. Okay, so now if no lights are on, that means there is no octave going up or down. This is the actual sound of middle C. Same thing going down. So kind of self-explanatory. Okay, now below the octaves, there are two buttons that all have to do with the pads. So it's full level and note repeat. So full level is kind of self-explanatory as well because um, the pads are like pressure sensitive. So if I press it softly, you barely hear it, but if I press it hard, so it's pressure sensitive. So if I turn on full level, it'll light up red, right? It's on right now, which is the bottom left button. And if I press it, no matter how soft or how hard, it'll be the same like full sound. So this is a soft press. It's just soft. And if I press it hard, versus, you see, so that's what full level does. And then note repeat is you just press it. Um, for example, if I hold down note repeat, which is this button right here, and I hold this down, it's going that fast because of the 116th triplet that I put before. Okay, so now we just got through the pads 
and all the buttons and knobs here. The keyboard is just a regular keyboard. It's just a normal, you know, just a regular keyboard, nothing special, whatever you, you can see everything you need to see. I might just show you a close up of it, just to show you just a keyboard. Right? Okay, now to the top right corner, uh, those knobs affect these pads here and they give you a software that you could use to put into these knobs to make them do something, I guess, cool. You can put kind of effects on it and each one affects each pad uh, differently. And then in terms of the buttons here, let me show you. There we go. There's bank A and bank B, which means when it's green, the pads here are a certain set of pads and then when you click it, it turns red, then it's a different set of pads. So for example, oh, sorry. For example, if I go into, uh, I'm just gonna type in a drum kit, right? I'm in GarageBand, by the way, guys. All right, so this is when it's, when it's A, it's just like a tom. But when I change the bank to B, which means it should have all new sounds, it should be a kick. Right? So I'll show you again with a different one. Let's say this one with bank A, with bank B. All right, guys. So next to the bank A, bank B, you'll see the middle button, which is a CC. And then the one to the right is program change. And then the one all the way to the right is program select. So if you want to change the program, which they give you a software that would let you be able to edit each pad individually, You'll press program change, right? And then you'll hold down program select. And then if you can see it above the pads itself, like next to program five, I mean, next to pad five, you'll see program one, pad six, program two, pad seven, program three, and pad eight, program four. If you can see at the top in the red, then you just hold it down, select whatever program you want, and then your pads should act differently depending on which program you select. So other than that, I think that's all you need to know about the Akai MPK Mini MK2. On the side is where you plug in the plug that they give you. And on the back, as you can see right there, if you could focus, there's a sustain. So you just plug it in so you could hold out your notes. All right, so these are the programs that come with the Akai, which is MPC Essentials, Hybrid 3, and Wobble. So I'll show you what they look like on the back, just in case you guys are interested. I don't usually, ooh, my bad. I don't usually use them because I prefer GarageBand and it's kind of hard to, I guess, learn or just I have just been the time, but that's what they are. These are the different interfaces. It shows you what each one of them does. And this one down here is the main one you should use if you're changing the pads or you're using the knobs to give it different effects. So that's it. That's pretty much everything that comes with it. I'll show you. If I can, a quick that. So you could pause the video and read that if you want to. That should show you everything you need. And that's pretty much it. So all right guys, that was the tutorial slash review on the Akai MPK Mini MK2. I really hope you enjoyed it. And don't worry, because I'm going to be making a beat for my next video and I actually have some fire just waiting for you guys. I'll give you a little sneak peek of what it sounds like, but like, it's, it's gonna be a good one. So I hope you enjoyed that, I hope that helped. Let me know what questions you have slash if it helped you. And this is gonna be kind of what next video is gonna sound like. So let's see if it'll play out for you guys. That's all you guys get for now. So come back very, very soon because this video will be up, like how I made it and everything. And I actually had help with this video. Some of my friends helped me out. So I want to say shout out to you guys. And <laughs> this video is going to be really lit. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. See you guys very soon. And thanks for rocking with me through that little pause. Kick it right out. Stay positive.